Well, hi, I'm Cam Clark. This is my first YouTube channel for, or my first YouTube video for my channel, The Awesome Life Force. Kind of a strange name, but basically it's the physics channel. Um, and this <coughs> it was named this way because of this book, but changed my life a long time ago. The Awesome Life Force by my friend Joseph, Joseph H. Cater, who's now passed on a few years ago. So we're going to quickly explain, I think I can explain within five minutes, the theory of gravity and basically the unified field theory. Should be pretty easy. Let's rock and roll. You guys ready? Let's do this. Okay, a long time ago, science had the concept of, we're trying to explain uh, light and such using the concept of an ether that they threw it away. But let's just, there is an ether throughout all the space, acts like a perfect gas. So the way I like to visualize a bunch of little ping pong balls moving randomly throughout space. And that's why, um, um, science has something called Planck's constant, which they represent the letter H. H represents uh, Planck's constant, basically says energy exists in discrete bundles. And hence, the reason why is because there is an ether. There is an ether throughout space, and every ether particle has the same energy. Hence, Planck's constant, um, which says energy exists in discrete bundles. Okay, so now we got the, you've got a concept of an ether. It's kind of like a perfect gas, a bunch of ping pong balls moving throughout space. When these ethers get compressed together, they form photons of light. <laughs> okay, so the, when you when you compress ether particles together through energy, whatever, it gets forms photons of light. When these photons of light also sometimes combine with other photons of light, you get what we're call, what we're going to call soft particles. So basically. They're bigger and they represent kind of like an electron, but we'll get to that in a bit later. Let's bring that up for now. Now an electron. Um, let's visualize an electron as a, as a ball. Um, basically, the ether particles are randomly hitting the ball. So at any given time, an electron feels a constant pressure all around the edge, okay? So you bring now uh, a second electron nearby and some of the, these ether particles are randomly hitting it, all sides. But some of the ether particles get are in between. So rather than just randomly hitting it, it's like a ping pong, ping, a pinball effect, where there's because they bounce back and forth quickly, there gives more pressure than just the random hitting. So that's electrostatic repulsion. That's why two electrons repel each other. Okay. So now we've done electron electrostatic. Now let's do, what's a magnetic field? So if you have an electron, normally it's being randomly hit by, uh, by ether particles, but as an electron starts to move, it has like kind of a, a corkscrew shape on one end. So as it moves through the ethers, it starts spinning the ethers through this cork shape, corkscrew shape on one end. It creates a vortex of ether particles around it. Hence the magnetic field, which is a, basically a, a vortex of ether particles as it moves through. The thing about once you have a magnetic field around you, it's like a shield. So you can't be hit as often by other um, ether particles because you have a shield around you. So as the magnetic field goes up, the electrostatic field goes down and vice versa. As the electrostatic field goes up, the magnetic field goes down. So that's electricity and magnetism. Okay, now we're going to do a proton. Proton, similar to electron, it's a thousand times bigger, roughly. The difference between electron and proton is a proton is is basically I like to visualize it as a strawberry. I don't know if you've, you've eaten strawberries in your life, but when you cut them open. They have a hollow interior and you'll see that they have a bunch of where the seeds are they have a bunch of holes that lead to the core like channels so basically ether particles and they come to hit the proton instead of bouncing off they get they go into these channels into then they accumulate in the core it's kind of like breathing in and then once there's too many in here they breathe out because these have their own what do you call it electrostatic magnetic forces so there's too many, they repel each other. So a, pro a proton basically 
getting a pause here for my cameraman. But the proton breathes in, and then we'll breathe out the uh, ether particles. That's why if you have a proton, well, it's a thousand times bigger than an electron, but a proton and a, and a, a proton and an electron will never come together because it's always, it's even though it's they they come together because this is breathing in and this is being hit randomly. The proton will always have some small exhalation, which will keep the proton and the electron from ever forming a bond like that. And once again, the proton has a corkscrew shape on one end. So as it flows through the ethers, it creates a magnetic field and then that's a magnetic field of the proton. Okay. We're almost at gravity now. I didn't time it, but we're getting close to five minutes, hopefully. So gravity, what is gravity? Let's take this as the surface of the earth. We call it deep earth. Here we have me sitting here, our hero, sitting here on the earth. I'm being pulled towards the earth. And let's say I'm even in the sky. I'm being pulled towards the earth. So how is this earth touching me? Well, if something's touching, like current theory says, oh, a bending of space, all this blah, blah, blah. Just crap, throw that right in the garbage. What's really happening is the earth is giving off light in a certain range, which we'll get to in a second. The light is being is coming off the earth going northwards or towards me. When I get hit by this light, I get pulled down. So that's how the earth, the, the earth's gravity using light, that's how it touches people, so to speak, and pulls them in. So let's, let's, let's see how, how is it that the, the gravity is touching me and then pulling me down? Well, we already talked about a proton is like a thousand times bigger than, than an electron and science currently accepts that as well. So basically all, all matter like me, I'm positively charged. The reason why is because it takes like a thousand, roughly a thousand electrons to neutralize a proton. Even though current science does not believe that, but that's the reality of it. So everything is positive, most things are positively charged. So everything that's positively charged is pulled down by gravity. So basically what's happening is the earth is giving off light. It looks like kind of like this. So I'm, let's say I'm in the sky, I'm positive. It's giving off light that basically has a negative charge at the top and a positive charge at the bottom. So as this light's coming, I'm being attracted to, the positive is being attracted to the negative and as the light goes past me, so as I'm being, as it's pull, it pulls me down and then as it goes past me, it's a positive and the positive pushes me down. So it's basically attraction and push. That's how gravity works. So it turns out that light, um, um, one more thing I want to just quickly explain here. <clears throat> So if this, this quote unquote light has a negative charge here and a positive charge here, what's really going on is light, there's certain, um, the, there's basically what we talked about earlier, we have um, soft particles, you have like a light, a, a bunch of ether particles together forming a, a photon of light, then you get a bunch like this together, clumps of it, called soft, now we're called soft particles, but basically the light's being shot off like this, and there's also some of the ether particles or photons that are like this on the bottom end. Certain light, we found that light between um, the infrared and uh, the radar band gives off light that kind of looks like this. So it's, it's a photon of light that looks like, it's like, basically resembles a, an electron at the top it has little other ether particles clinging at the bottom, which kind of like little channels here. And that basically is a slight positive, and then this is the negative. So when, when the Earth gives off light, it looks like this, and it only happens in the infrared and the radar band, which is around a wavelength of uh, 0.3 millimeters to uh, 4.3 millimeters. When the light gives off like this, it produces gravity. Now, people ask, well, why, why doesn't all light give, do this? A lot of light um, between the infrared and the radar band, this light is very penetrating. Like infrared bounces off things and radar, or sorry, radar bounces off of things, whereas infrared is very penetrating. So somewhere in here is light that doesn't scatter very much. And that's why these, uh, <clears throat> these gravity, uh, this gravity, let's call it radiation, is so effective. 
Other light will do the same thing, but it scatters so easily it has no, not very much, very little effect. But this this light will use the gravity light. So basically, we can replicate this light anti gravity. So uh, hopefully, I did that in five minutes. But uh, uh, that was my first video, so a bit rough. But uh, hopefully, I quickly explained basically the unified field theory for everyone. And that's it. Cam Clark signing out.